Today, the CPI rockets to 7.8%, but is this the peak? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the ABS says the Consumer Price Index, the CPI, rose 1.9% this quarter, and over the 12 months to the December 2022 quarter, the CPI rose 7.8%. This will certainly increase the probability of a further RBA cash rate early next month. The ABS said this is the fourth consecutive quarter to show a rise greater than any seen since the introduction of the goods and services tax in the year 2000. The increase for the quarter was slightly higher than the quarterly movements for the September and June quarters last year, which were both 1.8%. And by the way, this was higher than most economists expected as well. Underlying inflation measures reduce the impact of irregular or temporary price changes for the CPI yet, for the third consecutive quarter, annual trimmed mean inflation was the highest since the series commenced in 2003, increasing to 6.9%, up from 6.1% in the September quarter, and the weighted mean was 5.8%. So whichever way you look at it, it's way above the 2-3% target the RBA has. Discretionary inflation increased 2.6% in the December quarter, following higher prices for holiday travel and meals out and takeaway. The annual movement reached a new high of 7.1%, while non-discretionary inflation remained stable at 8.4%. The most significant price rises were domestic holiday travel and accommodation up 13.3%, electricity up 8.6%, international holiday travel and accommodation up 7.6%, and new dwelling purchases by owner-occupiers at 1.7%. The annual CPI movement of 7.8% is the highest since 1990. The past four quarters have seen strong quarterly rises off the back of higher prices for food, automotive fuel, and new dwelling construction. Trimmed mean annual inflation, which excludes large price rises and falls, increased to 6.9%. That's the highest since the ABS first published the series in 2003. The services component of the CPI recorded its largest annual rise since 2008, driven by holiday travel and meals out and takeaway food. Annual inflation for goods saw little change from the previous quarter. High labour and materials costs continue to drive increases in prices for new dwellings. The rate of price growth has started to ease over recent quarters, following a record annual rise in the September 2022 quarter. Fewer payments of government construction grants compared to the previous quarter also contributed to the rise this quarter. These grants have the effect of reducing out-of-pocket expenses for new dwelling purchases. Rental price growth in Sydney and Melbourne has continued to increase this quarter, with both cities recording their strongest annual rises since 2014 and 15 respectively, reflecting a tight rental market. Annual growth in rent prices for the remaining capital cities continues to outpace growth in Sydney and Melbourne, reflecting lower vacancy rates in those cities. Now, since July 2022, the ABS has incorporated a new data source to measure the rents series in the monthly CPI indicator and the quarterly CPI. The new data set obtained by the ABS is updated monthly and includes approximately 480,000 rental properties that are used to produce the CPI rent series across all capital cities. The CPI measures the current price being paid by all types of households that rent, including new and existing renters who are renting privately or from the government. Measures of rental inflation that are based on newly advertised rental properties only measure changes in the asking or advertised price of rental properties for new tenancies, but at any given time, newly advertised tenancies represent a relatively small proportion of properties being rented in Australia. The rents series used for the CPI measures actual rents paid rather than advertised prices, and advertised rents tend to reflect the dynamic end of the rental market, where the price change for new tenancies can be more volatile than that being experienced by renters with existing tenancy agreements. Price changes observed in advertised rent series are expected to eventually flow through to the CPI rent series. However, the small share of rental properties leased to new tenants each quarter means that it takes some time for changes in advertised rents to impact price changes observed 
in the CPI rents series, but it could mean higher readings ahead. Strong price rises were seen across most food and non-food grocery products in the December quarter. Those increases reflected elevated input costs for farmers and producers of packaged goods, as well as strong Christmas demand. Fruit and vegetables experienced the strongest quarterly fall, though, since 2012. However, prices remained elevated compared to 12 months ago. Automotive fuel prices rose 2.2% in the December quarter. The federal government restored the full fuel excise on the 30th of September from 22 cents per litre to 46 cents per litre, which drove growth in the first two months of the quarter before lower wholesale prices flowed through in December. For the December quarter, automotive fuel prices remained 13.2% higher compared to 12 months ago. Looking at the latest quarterly movements, we see the strongest rise in recreation and culture at 5.4%. This was also increased in percentage weighting, by the way, in the last ABS review. Domestic holiday travel and accommodation rose 13.3% due to strong demand, particularly during the December school holiday period, affecting both airfares and accommodation. International holiday and travel and accommodation rose 7.6% due to strong demand in the lead up to the Christmas holiday period and the number of operating flights still being below pre-COVID levels, resulting in large price rises. Clothing and footwear at 2.6% and insurance and financial services were up 2%. The insurance and financial services group recorded the strongest quarterly rise since 2011, up 2.5%, thanks to rises across house, house contents and motor vehicle insurance. This was the strongest quarterly rise since 2016, and other financial services, up 2.1%, was the main contributor to the rise due to stamp duty and higher real estate agent fees. Over the past 12 months, the group rose 5%. Other financial services were 5.4% higher, and that was the main contributor to the rise. Housing was up 1.9%, while food and beverages was just 0.9%. Within housing in the quarter, electricity rose 8.6%, due to the unwinding of electricity rebates this quarter. Last quarter, electricity costs fell in Perth and Canberra following the introduction of the Western Australian government's $400 household electricity credit and the ACT government's $50 rebate for concession households. This quarter, the effects of those rebates were largely reversed as they had less impact on households' electricity bills. The rise this quarter was partially offset by the ongoing impact of the Queensland government's $125 cost of living rebate and the introduction of the Tasmanian government's $119 winter bill buster electricity discount for concession households. New dwellings purchased by owner-occupiers rose 1.7% due to builders passing through increased costs for labour and materials and the rate of price growth has continued to ease this quarter reflecting subdued new demand and improvements in the supply of materials. Fewer grant payments this quarter from the federal government's Home Builder Program and similar state-based housing construction grants also contributed to the rise. Rents rose 1.2% this quarter, with the annual rise of 4%, the highest since 2012. All capital cities contributed to the quarterly and annual rises in rents, reflecting low vacancy rates and competitive rental markets across the country. Over the past 12 months, the group rose 10.7%. The main contributor to the rise was new dwelling purchased by owner-occupiers, up 17.8%. There were significant differences across the states, though, with the biggest rise in the quarter in Perth, up 3.6%, driven by electricity, up 527.2%, which rose due to electricity costs for most households returning to normal levels as the impact of the Western Australian government's $400 household electricity credit introduced in the previous quarter, lessened. Domestic holiday travel and accommodation were up 11.8%. Automotive fuel rose 3.5%. International holiday travel and accommodation were up 6.7%. But vegetables fell 6.9% and fruit fell 7.1%. Perth recorded an annual rise of 8.3%. Sydney rose 1.8% with domestic holiday travel and accommodation up 13%. The end of the accommodation voucher scheme offered by the New South Wales government also contributed to the rise, as these vouchers had the effect of reducing out-of-pocket costs for consumers in previous quarters. New dwellings purchased by owner occupiers were up 1.7%, international holiday travel and accommodation were up 7.6%, and other financial services were up 2.5% and childcare up 8%, and that rose due to reduced intake 
of the New South Wales government before and after school care vouchers, which resulted in high out-of-pocket costs for families in Sydney. But vegetables fell 11.1%, and overall Sydney recorded an annual rise of 7.6%. Adelaide was at 1.7%, with domestic holiday travel and accommodation at 14.2%. New dwellings purchased by owner-occupiers were at 2.6%. Automotive fuel was 4.5% higher. Vegetables, though, fell 10.4%, and Adelaide's annual rise was 8.6%. Melbourne rose 1.6% with domestic holiday travel and accommodation up 15.5%, international holiday travel and accommodation up 8.8%, and new dwellings purchased by owner-occupiers at 1.5%. Other financial services were at 1.9%, but vegetables were down 10.8%. And Melbourne recorded an annual rise of 8%. Over in Hobart, they rose 1.5% across the quarter, with domestic holiday travel and accommodation up 22.5%, international holiday travel and accommodation at 10.9%, and new dwellings purchased by owner occupiers up 2.2%. Electricity, though, fell 7.3% due to the introduction of the Tasmanian government's $119 winter billbuster electricity discount for concession households. And vegetables fell 8.9%. Hobart recorded an annual rise of 7.7%. Brisbane was also 1.5% higher with domestic holiday travel and accommodation up 11.5%. New dwellings purchased by owner-occupiers were at 1.7%. Automotive fuel was up 3.2%. International holiday travel and accommodation up 6.2%. But electricity fell 14% due to the ongoing impact of the Queensland government's $175 cost of living rebate introduced last quarter. And vegetables fell 9.4%. Water and surge were down 10.9% due to the $55 water bill discount introduced by the Queensland government from November. And Brisbane overall recorded an annual rise of 7.7%. Canberra rose 1.2% with international holiday travel and accommodation up 12.1%. Domestic holiday travel and accommodation up 7.1%. Other financial services up 4.4%. But vegetables dropped 10.4%. Automotive fuel down 3.1%. And Canberra recorded an annual rise of 7.1%. And Darwin, which recorded the smallest rise of all capital cities was at 0.9%, with international holiday travel and accommodation up 7.5%, spare parts and accessories up 5.3%, vegetables down 11.4%, automotive fuel down 2.3%, domestic holiday travel and accommodation down 1.1%. Darwin recorded an annual rise of 7.1%. And separately, the ABS also released the monthly CPI indicator for December. The monthly indicator rose 8.4% in the 12 months to December, following annual rises of 7.3% in November and 6.9% in October. The ABS said the monthly indicator recorded the largest annual rise in the series in December. The most significant contributors in the 12 months to December were new dwellings up 16% and holiday travel and accommodation up 29.3%. Airfares and accommodation prices rose in response to strong demand over the Christmas holiday period. So you can see here that inflation is absolutely at the top of its game. The question, of course, is, is this the peak? Well, Jim Chalmers sort of suggested in his press conference today that it was. And some analysts are also making the same call. There is, of course, going to be the base effect where those higher rises earlier on will drop out over the next couple of quarters. But the question is how much of that will be replaced by new inflation stemming predominantly from significant rises in wages, particularly in the services sector, as well as ongoing questions with regard to supply chain and other goods and services costs. So it's probably too soon to say for sure whether we've peaked, we'll know in a quarter or two. But it does underscore, I think, that inflation is still not under control. And therefore, my expectation is the RBA will lift again in February when they meet and it may well not be the last rise that we see. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.